DC. He is a beast. And now we will say GG's to GG. <laughs> and they make quick work of their opponents, Utica, getting revenge from the regular season play and letting them know why they are now back-to-back -back champions. Oh, what a good game. What a banger. Should we, uh, do All right, welcome back, Tech Community, to another championship interview. We have with me tonight Jobs the Panda. He is your captain from the Greensburg Guardians and um, their League of Legends team, the Division One champions for season three. We're going to ask him some questions and get this interview started. So, Jobs the Panda, what? First of all, what is your real name so I can not call you <laughs> by your gamer tag all the whole interview? Yeah, well, thanks, Nizzy. And my real name is Robert, so I'm, I'm good to go by Robert for this interview. Okay, cool. Um, all right, Robert, where are you from? How did you become a team captain? How did you hear about tech? Um, just kind of introduce yourself and kind of your story of joining tech uh, as well as the League of Legends team. Sweet, sweet. Yeah, I'm originally from the Greensburg area, a small town, Trafford. It's right by Monroeville, Murraysville. So we, we saw the league through, I believe, like a Facebook ad or an Instagram ad and all our friends, we all played league. So we all kind of joined at the same time. And that was during like the start of season two. So we played in the first league championship that Greensburg won. And then this year, a lot of those guys that won the championship last year left and our guys kind of moved up. We took it really seriously and we worked hard and that's how we won the championship. And that's how we're here. And that's how we heard about TC to be honest. Yeah. It's awesome. Um, so Let's talk about like your season a little bit. Season three, you said you were champions of season two as well. So that make you back back champions was pretty cool. Um, but this season you had um, your your record was five and one. So do you want to talk a little bit about like your season highs, your lows? Were there any uh, roster changes mid season? Um, and what was that one loss? And, you know, how'd that go? I kind of want to talk about that because that was your only blemish on your otherwise perfect record. Yeah, exactly. We had that one loss, and it was actually to the team that we played in the championship, which was the Utica, Mas Utica Muskrats. And going to that game, you know, we were really excited during the regular seasons. We knew they were also undefeated, so it was two undefeating teams clashing for the final game of the season. But unfortunately, we were struggling with a few of our players making it to practices and the games on time because their work schedule got changed halfway through the season. Mm. So we were actually missing our top laner and AD Carey going into that game. So that definitely kind of set us back. And like I said, we had to change our practice time. So we weren't practicing as much as we wanted to, which was another setback with our team because of their delayed work schedules for the last few weeks of the season. So going into there, we didn't have our full roster. We weren't playing at full strength. And, you know, Utica did a great job. They took advantages of our weakness in the top lane and our AD carry. And, you know, from that, they were able to win the two games. But we were able to play, in my opinion, pretty closely. But, you know, when it came down to the mid middle of the game with the team fighting, since we didn't have as much chemistry, they were able to beat us in those games. So would you say the Utica Muskrats were your toughest opponent all season? Yeah, by far the toughest opponent all season. And, I mean, as the record shows, they were the only ones to take a game off us. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about the championship game itself. Um, were you able to get those players uh back into the game and like, you know, able to schedule around their work and kind of let, let's walk through those three games. It was a three Oh victory, of course. Um, but was it really that dominant? Was it close at all? Uh, did you, uh, you talked about, you know, the top lane, was it a little bit strengthened from since the last time you played them? So the problem with our roster to begin with, before we even go into these games is that we had three support players and those three support players, they were, you know, they're great guys and they were willing to do different things. So we had one support player on AD carry during the normal season and then one support player on the top lane. So once we were able to get, you know, our other top laner, AD carry in, we were able to kind of rotate those three support players through just playing support, which really helped us. So we gave each of those support players one game. And since they have such different champion pools, it really allowed us to be diverse in the bot lane. So that's how we kind of overcame the bot lane. We were able to use new champs that they weren't used to seeing. Mm. And then also in the top lane, our top laner is very diverse. His name's Fly. And he was able to pick some new picks that I don't think they were expecting. And as we go through the first three games, I'd say all the games were really close. And I would even say in the third game, we were losing 
for the first 15 minutes. And we were able to have one huge team fight at the Dragon Pit, which is an objective in the game. And from that team fight in the Dragon, we were able to take the Dragon, gain momentum, and you know slowly kind of climb back from that gold deficit. And it might have tilted them a little bit because after that, they just kept making mistakes around the Baron Pit, which is another objective in the game. And that's how we were able to win that game three. But game one and two kind of went as planned. We had a big early game advantage. Our lanes were winning, and we took that early game advantage, and we just correctly acted upon it throughout the mid to late game to allow us to win. Very nice. Yeah, and then gamers out there, all as as you guys know, not just in League of Legends, but you know Overwatch uh, games like that, it is really important to pick a composition that works. And sometimes you have to go on the fly and pick counter picks. Um, So as far as like legends in uh, League of Legends, what would what would be your favorite uh, champion to pick your favorite legend that you'd like to run? Uh, My favorite legend to pick would definitely be Fiddlesticks. I only got it once throughout the entire season for one game out of the, you know, at least 15 games we played, including the playoff games. So it's pretty they banned it a lot. Mm. But I also, you know, we played I played some Hecarim, played some Udyr. Those are I like those champs, too. But we did see those getting banned out also towards the end of the season. Nice. And forgive my ignorance, but what is your favorite part about Fiddlesticks' kit? Like, what is what kind of draws you to that? Yeah, I like the part of his kit is where you can everyone can place wards, but he has the he has the ability to place effigies, which are just like mock versions of him, like scarecrows that you put in a field. He's a scarecrow character, so it's like a you can put other scarecrows on the map, and um, when people interact with them, they'll flash or they'll use a bit or they'll pretend to use abilities. So it's pretty cool that you don't just have wards. You have this like an extension of a ward that's a ward and a sweeper. And a sweeper allows you to clear other wards in the area. So it's a pretty unique ability that I think is pretty cool for a champion. He's the only one that has that type of ability. Very cool. Obviously, like you said, you were only able to play him like very little times, if at all, this season. So yeah. clearly your team has uh, a pretty wide hero pick, it sounds like. Um pretty versatile so other than league of legends what other games do you like to play is there any maybe i don't know do you guys like do you, do you play first person shooters at all do you like to play sports games um we like to play call of duty zombies a lot so that's a pretty big first person shooter we like doing the easter eggs on those maps that's a blast we also like playing halo master chief collection playing through those games especially reach those are our favorite first person shooters and then we just also like you know Playing any Nintendo game, you know, Mario Party, Mario Kart with our friends, Classic. or any of those like kind of couch co op games, you know, Overcooked, that's a great one. Oh, yeah. The moving, the moving Out one. So, those games with friends are a blast, you know, always a good time there. Awesome. Now, do you have any other hobbies outside of video games that you like to, you want to share about? Or, yeah, the yeah. That you I'm play? The, yeah, I'm the captain of the Ultimate Frisbee team here at uh, CU Boulder, the B team. So, it's a pretty, pretty fun time. And I actually, lead a workout squad in the morning. We have about eight, 10 guys. We go on runs and then we go work out in the gym together. And it's just like a friendly group. And I, and I love to ski. So we're out here in Colorado. So we've got some great skiing. I go to school here, like I said, from Pittsburgh though. Okay. So we were just skiing actually yesterday. So that's one of my favorite things to do. And I actually got several guys on the team to go skiing. We went on some skiing trips, nice. which was super cool to see the TC going, you know, meeting up in real life and doing fun things together. I mean, that's really what it's all about. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, post in a post COVID world, that is going to be much more prevalent, you know, being able to meet up with your teams around the tech community and, and uh, maybe doing meetups at the Johnstown HQ. Um, yeah, you know, that's definitely something everyone I'm sure is looking forward to. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to actually able to do more than I mean, we did like one or twice skiing, yeah. it was pretty social distance, but other activities like going out to eat, maybe we could do some paintball and or fun things like that, you know, golfing. Exactly. So do you have any uh, advice for new players coming into tech, not just for League of Legends, but just kind of like, you know, joining the tech community in any game? Do you have any new advice for them? Yeah, I'd say when I first joined tech, I was a little intimidated by, you know, these high rank players and the amount of volume of players. And I would say, you know, don't be intimidated coming in. Everyone's super friendly and kind. And, you know, just put yourself out there, you know, go to the practices, ask people for advice, you know, you got to realize that, you, you know, you got to improve, but, you know, you're also an individual and you're human and you're, you know, you're here to learn. So get out there, put yourself out there. And, and honestly, it's a blast. It's a fun league and you're not going to regret it. It's great advice. Yeah. And um, last but not least, uh, where can we find you? If we're trying to look you up on social media, are you on Instagram? Uh, where can these, uh, the tech community find you? Yeah. Um, you can find me on Instagram. My Instagram handle is young Bobby 
uh, underscore 2016. So hit me up on Instagram. Any other Twitter or Facebook or? Uh, yeah, Facebook. My name's uh, Bobby Specht. So, f- f- you know, give me a like, friend request. I'll friend you back. And yeah, that's it. I do not have a Twitter, unfortunately. All right. Well, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, we appreciate it. Thank you, of course, um, to Robert for uh, doing this interview with us. He is your captain of the Greensburg Guardians League of Legends D1 team. Um, be sure to follow the rest of our interviews as we will be posting these uh, pretty pretty frequently here. And uh, don't miss season four uh, coming up. May 17th is our projected start date. And I believe League of Legends is played on Thursday nights. Is that correct? That is correct. Thursday night. And is there any way I can give a thanks to some of the guys on my team that really been pivotal the whole season? Yeah, absolutely. Give some shout outs uh, to your teammates. Yeah, yeah. I want to give a big shout out to Aaron, first and foremost. He was a support player and he took up the AD carry role for 95% of the season. So, I mean, that was really generous of him to be able to do that and help us out. And then giving a thanks to my co-captain, my brother, um, SCI William, great job playing support. And then my mid laner, Joey Sloss, and our top laner, Leroy, who actually play, is a support player, who got to play support finally at the end of the season. So big thanks to him, too, for going to play a new role, learning a new role for us so we could make it through the season until we work through those schedules with the, our other players, along with Fly and Omar for coming in clutch. And then lastly, a thanks to all the D2 players that helped us scrim, and get us ready, especially their captains, um, Plutonium 98 and Ghost. Nice. So thanks for everyone. I mean, it takes really a whole town to make these things happen and getting us prepped and ready and trained. Exactly. Everyone out there take notes from uh, all this. This is also uh, really good stuff. You know, practice with your team, be out there and uh, you will get your chance. Just like uh, Robert said, some of these guys weren't able to play during the main season, but they stuck with it, practiced and uh, they were able to play in the championship and ultimately won. So they're doing something right. Um, any other final remarks you'd like to say before signing off? Uh, other than thank you, Nizzy, for doing the interview. Really appreciate it. And um, I'm excited for season four. Awesome. Thanks, you. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll see you guys season four. And, um, you know, make sure you follow our socials. Thank you, Tech Community and Robert, for uh, this interview. Hope you guys have a good one.